Now, let me take you through a couple of processes that you can use to find where your errors are in your Power Query. So I'm just going to delete from the first um, transformation I started here, which is from replace value all the way to the end. So I will right click on the first replace value and I'm going to select delete until end. Then I'm going to click on delete. So we are back to what it used to look like and the only column that has errors now is the price per unit and I'm going to force this quantity column to also have errors by selecting change type here to whole number and I'm going to replace current so I can have some errors here then I'm also going to scroll to the left to my date and I'm also going to change this order date to date data type to also introduce the errors on that column as well. So now we have a couple of errors scattered everywhere and if you want to always to find where your errors are, the first thing that you can do is make sure you select one column in that data table, then press Ctrl A to highlight all the columns and then on the home tab, you are gonna go to where you have keep rows, you click on the drop down for keep rows and you select keep errors. Now this is gonna show you only the rows that contain errors and you can see the query here is table.select rows with errors, right? So now from here, you can start to trace what your errors are column by column. And I'm sure you are probably wondering what if you have too many columns that contain too many errors. Well, if you find yourself in that kind of scenario, then you are going to need to perform some gymnastics. So I'm going to start by deleting these kept error steps and I'm going to show you and teach you how to perform that gymnastics. So what you are going to do is go to the home tab in your Power Query, then click on new source, like you are bringing in a data set, but you are not really bringing in any data set and we are going to go with blank query. So, in the formula bar, you are going to type in equal to, what was that function we just saw right now? Is table.select errors, but you don't have to type table.select errors. What you are going to type is table select. So once you type table select, it's going to show you the function that has something similar, which is table.select rows with errors. We are going to select that. Then you can open brackets and this function has just input that is required which is the table now the table that we want to pass in here is the sales data table so if i type in sales here it's going to show me the one that is the sales data which is that one with the hashtag and the double quotes the hashtag and the double quotes is something that you are going to see a lot in power query when a table name has space it is going to be written like this so I want to select that sales data and I'm going to mark my formula here to say that I'm done. This gives me all the rows that has the errors alone. Then I'm going to select one column again. Remember to always click for you to select a column and I'm going to press Ctrl A to highlight all the columns. Then I'm going to right click on any of the column headers and I'm going to select on pivot column. So I'm on pivoting all the columns in this data table. So now I have my column headers on the left hand side and I have the values on the right hand side. Now I'm going to go to value column from my home tab. I will go to keep rows and I'm going to select keep errors. So this is going to keep only those columns with errors and even the records with the errors. Now, we are going to add a column here. It's going to be a custom column. And all we are going to do in that custom column is to type in the expression try. Try, I'm putting a space there. And I want to try this values column. So try is an expression that is going to check if there is an error somewhere and if there is, what exactly is the error about. So try value, I'm going to click OK. This gives me my new custom column. And if I click on any of the cells for this custom column, you are going to see that it has two values. One of them is whether it contains an error or not, which is true or false. 
and then there's another record for what the error really is about so i know everything here are errors if i come to the custom i'm going to expand that custom column i don't need the has error part that's the part that says true or false the only thing i need here is a real error message so i'm going to click ok and then that really gives me the record for all the errors so if you click in the cell again you see it has so many records one of them is the reason for the error and then another one is a real error message, right? So if I expand this column, I want to bring in only the reason and the message. Really, I don't need this use original column name as prefix. I'm going to click OK. It's going to give me these two columns. And this tells me the reasons for the different errors I have in those cells and also the error messages. So with these, I can easily track what are the different types of errors I have, and then I can also find out which columns are those errors coming from. So if you check the message, you can see that something is probably missing. So I can come here to the expanded custom error, edit settings, and I think I also need to bring in the detail as well. I'm going to click OK. So that is going to show me the real detail that is the cause of the errors. So I can see the letter S's and I can also see those two dates. Of course, because the divide by zero were imported errors, it's just being displayed as null.